So let's then have a look at uh, classless addressing. So this is typically called classless interdomain routing or CIDR for short. Uh, and this was really designed around two related kind of issues. Um, one is that the routing tables in the backbone routers were getting much, much bigger um, as the number of networks that were connected. So again, you could have 2 million of these uh, class C networks plus 64,000 roughly, 65,000 roughly of um, class B and 128 of class A. So your routing table needs to have potentially a few million entries. Uh, again, this is less of an issue now that computers are, uh, have much larger memory uh, and speed than they used to have. But going back, you know, 20 odd years, um, this was much more of an issue where these core routers need to be very, 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 very fast. Uh, and having that many uh, routing entries in them was a problem. So this is one issue. Uh, and the other was actually the address assignment efficiency. So if you get allocated a class A network, you get 16.7 million IP addresses. If you get allocated a class B, you get 65,536. If you get allocated a class C, you get 256 addresses. But what if you only needed, you know, to have some small number of uh, those addresses? And more the point, what if you needed 300 addresses? Uh, then a class C doesn't fit, so you get given a class B. And you're now using 300 of 65,536 addresses. You, this is half a percent efficient. Um, or worse, uh, or, or similarly rather, if you needed, you know, 80,000 addresses, so you get given a class A. Uh, but of course, actually, again, there weren't that many class A's to be given out. So they got exhausted quite quickly. Uh, the class B's got exhausted quite quickly. And then organizations were getting allocated blocks of class C's. Um, and so they, they needed a, a solution to try and uh, improve this uh, considerably. And so this is what um, classless interdomain routing was designed to deal with both of these uh, kind of things. And it was, again, it was a class B network number. So it was the big problem where middle size and large organizations uh, couldn't get them. So the solution was actually to say, you can't have a 64K class B block uh, unless you can really show that you need to have very nearly 64K addresses. Instead, you would get given typically a contiguous range of class C addresses that were uh, chosen with a subnet number within the logical uh, space so that you could con uh, you know, summarize it with a single uh, network mask uh, and uh, solve it that way. So and this would get much higher utilization uh, of space. But again, it wasn't without problems uh, itself because suddenly now the routers needed to have potentially very many more uh, entries because we couldn't just have the 16-bit uh, class B networks. We needed to have uh, you know, all of these entries uh, for the um, uh, uh, the autonomous system, which is kind of in the, the internet routing system is each separate, you know, large network. So a large organization, for example, will be an autonomous system. And it's the entries routing to these that was uh, growing considerably. Um, so if we give a, a block of class Cs, we now need to have more entries in the routing table than if we just given them a class B. So suddenly we had this uh, dilemma, do we optimize the size of the routing table or do we optimize the allocation of IP addresses? But both were in short demand, uh, both were under pressure. Uh, and so um, CIDR tries to balance this by allowing us to uh, aggregate routes uh, that can be summarized into simpler network entries uh, between them. But in the process, this breaks this rigid boundary between the, um, uh, the address classes. So if, for example, uh, we had, uh, you know, again, the AS has 16 class C uh, networks, instead of handing out um, 16 random class Cs, if we give them 16 contiguous ones that uh, in the binary representation of the addresses uh, is agreeable, uh, then we can actually pick something like this, where the top uh, 20 bits of the address stay the same. So the top 20 bits, the top two bytes stay the same, 192.4. And then the next byte is 16 through to 31. So 16 in binary is 0001 and then four zeros. And 31 is 0001 and four ones. 
So now we have a 20-bit network number, which is, you know, so this is intermediate between class B and class C. Um, but it means that we can describe it, uh, as we'll see in a moment, with a, a single prefix. And so the trick is you have to meet this kind of rule of having a fixed number of uh, bits at the start, uh, the maximum number of bits at the start that remain invariant and have only the lower bits uh, change. And so when we talk about this, um, instead of having the, the implicit class A, class B, class C, we put slash and the number of bits, which is that common prefix length at the start. So that example we had with 20 bits the same, we would you pick the lowest uh, network number and then put the slash 20 on the end. So it would be 192.4.16 slash 20. Or you might write it as 192.4.16.0 slash 20 if you just kind of write it out at, uh, at full length. But both of those descriptions are valid descriptions. So the 10... The class A network, that's 10 dot anything. You can write as just 10 slash eight. Uh, but again, for people to mentally pick up that it's an IP address, it's not uncommon to write it as 10 dot o dot o dot o slash eight. Um, and so again, if the allocation was only for a single class C instead of for 16, the network number might have been the same, but we now slash 24 instead of slash 20 because it will only be uh, the eight bits at the bottom uh, that will be host numbers. Okay, and we'll talk about that in the next video.